Good evening. Welcome to the Dr. L Show. We have a special segment today for you. We are here to talk about drugs and its impact on the family life. Without further ado, here's uh, Bill's family. My name is Bill. I am 42 years old and I grew up in Hamilton in a middle class family. Uh, my dad worked at Stelco and my mom worked at the Hamilton Spectator. I worked at various summer jobs at Stelco in various positions. Got a job at Stelco after high school, full time of course. I met Janie when I was 25 years old, and I have three kids with her, Ross, and Fiona and Laura, who are twins. Janie worked part-time as a bus driver, and she mostly took care of the kids and the home. I got into a workplace accident at age 31 when a crane malfunctioned and dropped a steel cast and landed on my leg. I am lucky to have survived, and my leg was amputated as a result of the injury. Union, the union negotiated an office position for me, and I picked it up easily, and I moved up the ranks and became a manager of the accounts. And I also had a decent uh, salary. I bought a house in Stony Creek, where I live with my wife and my kids. But after the accident, I started taking opiate painkillers because the pain was really bad. It was too much to bear. I started taking more than I was prescribed. And I began seeing multiple doctors to get the, to get the, the drugs that I wanted and more than I needed for sure. I started buying them off the streets as a result of my addiction, and I missed a lot of work. Uh, as a result, I ended up getting fired. Uh, I couldn't afford the house, and this led to a floor foreclosure of it. Janie couldn't deal with it anymore, and she took the kids and moved with her parents. I stayed at a men's homeless shelter where I ended up meeting my outreach worker. I, it wasn't too long ago that I was j unfortunately jumped, and this led to a brain injury. And uh, as a result of this, I started drinking more. Uh, it's not it's not too bad, I wouldn't say. I'd say it's actually better than my opiate addiction. It's uh, more affordable, that's for sure, but it's uh, still not heading in the right direction. Uh, at this point in my life, I'm just kind of lost now, and I need my family. Uh, two of my kids won't speak to me, and... Fiona want, or Janie wants nothing to do with me at all. Um, as a result, I want to get my life on track. I want to find a new job. I believe that I can operate in this world better than most people operate in my position, even as a result of my injuries. It's people who make our country grow. Welcome back to the Dr. Al Show. We have our guest today, uh, Bill from uh, Hamilton Ontario. Thank you for having me, George. Welcome, Bill. How's it going today? Uh, it's all right. Things are going okay. Yeah, you've had a good day today. Better than usual, better than usual. So the first question I want to ask is, uh, what was your experience like with your drug addiction and growing up with that? Well, it seemed as though there was less risk for me to be using opiates at the time because the government wasn't paying as much attention to heroin and other opiates as they had in the past. Uh, I think it was because all the kids nowadays are now starting to use these more popular drugs like cannabis and hallucinogens. These hippies keep being public about their drug use and seem to really preach about how great it is. Uh, so I think it took a lot of the attention away from people like me who were using these type of opiates. Okay, okay. That's an interesting way, perspective of looking at it, looking at other drugs and stuff like that. Um, what is your life like now that you're off the opiates? Now that I'm using less, I wouldn't say I'm off. Now that I'm using less, I still need ways to deal with my pain and also to deal with the fact that my family my family hardly talks to me, and uh, because of this, I'm having trouble finding work. I'm not in a good place right now. So yes, I'm drinking more, um, but it's it's really no big deal. I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. I don't think it's doing let, more harm to me. I think it's less dangerous and definitely cheaper than some of the other addictions I've come across in my past. 
plus now I can even pick out my own liquor at the self-serve liquor stores that have started to open up around town. Those are great. <laughs> it's good to hear, bro. Um, so, other than your opiate, opiate use, why else do you think you can't find a job in uh, the Hamilton today? Well, I do believe that uh, my disabilities, as well as my history from my past job, does have an effect on whether I can get hired or not today. Um, I also think now that women are protesting equal employment and rights, there are less job opportunities out there for men like me who are struggling. Um, I understand that women should get paid equally, no matter what, but uh, for men like me who have been working so hard their whole life and then have one mistake and lose that opportunity, uh, it's hard to get back with the problems that I'm facing. Okay, so I want to look at a different perspective now. Um, so I want to look at the family perspective. How has your wife leaving you impacted your life? Well, in the years that Janie and I were married, and uh, she really took care of me. She really did. Uh, I guess it was the norm for a man's wife to take good care of their husband at the time. Um, and she did do a really good job of it, I'm not gonna lie. Everything that happened in our relationship is probably on me, not her. Uh, she didn't go to work all day, so she always made sure the house was clean. The kids were taken care of, and dinner was always made by the time I got home. Um, she even tried, she tried to help me the best she could with my uh, physiotherapy. And uh, handling my medication, of course, that didn't go too well. Um, but when she left, I really had to learn to make it on my own. And that was really tough at first, but uh, I've, ne I've never done much cooking or cleaning, you see. But um, going up with my mother, uh, she, she used to take care of that work too. Those norms existed back then, and then I never got the opportunity to step into that. And now that I'm seeing that I have to take care of myself, um, I suppose I'm looking for shortcuts. I'm taking the easy way out, but I feel like I can get by with what I have better than anybody else can in my situation. Okay, so you say getting by, that's an interesting look. Um, what has your housing situation been like? Uh, well, I have been between shelters, and uh, I'm currently renting a small room. Uh, I'm feeling hopeful about my housing though because my outreach worker has mentioned uh, subsidized, subsidized housing to me, I believe that's the term. Um, and this is something I would like to apply for, S since I'm not bringing in very much income right now, right? Obviously with the job situation not going too well. I think this form of housing, it would be good for me since with this new program, I can pay my rent depending on how much income I bring in. I'm also happy about this because subsidized housing is now being mixed with unsubsidized housing. I think this will make me feel less ashamed about my situation and will also make me feel like I'm actually a part of the community rather than grouping us all together in one little neighborhood to kind of get by. Um, don't get me wrong, I love I love the people that I've met at the shelter, they're, they're good friends, but uh, uh, I don't think they're the best influence for me going forward. All right, thank you, Bill, for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your perspective on uh, the situations you're living in. Thank you. Thank you. Early morning, city traffic. It's nice to know you've got a car that can help you handle the situation. Pinto is economical to operate and easy to handle. Pinto's rack and pinion steering and wide stands are designed for agility and quick response and make cornering and tight parking a little easier. Pinto offers you maneuverability, economy of operation, and value for the money. Good morning, this is your airborne traffic reporter. We've just lifted off and are heading out towards the... Ford Pinto, a strong alternative to the imports. <laughs> This is Bill's daughter and wife, Jane and Fiona, here today. So I just wanted to ask you guys a couple questions about how Bill is. And um, so, first of all, why did you meet Bill? Um, Bill was struggling with a drug and alcohol problem and was being a very um, absent father and husband. Um, he lost his job, so he wasn't bringing in an income, and it was getting very hard to support the family. So I felt it is, as a mother, it was my duty to 
um, step up and take care of my children. Okay, that's completely understandable. Um, how has that impacted your life not having like a husband there for you? Well, I had to go back to work, which is um, been difficult to find a good job. There's not many out there right now for women. Um, I'm currently working at a grocery store, which is um, not ideal, and it's difficult to put enough food on the table all the time for three children. Um, I've also um, lost a lot of friends because they look down on my family now for um, you know not having a husband and stuff like that. Okay. Um. So how's living with your parents? How how's that? I know you're living with your parents now, and that's a new experience. Yeah, it's difficult to be a grown woman with three children and having to move back and rely on my parents. Um, again, just I'm looked down on now from my whole family, and I'm really struggling to keep the kids um, optimistic. So how has that impacted your kids? Um, two of the kids don't speak to Bill now. The only one, Fiona, who still speaks to Bill. Um, my one son is at the age where he really needs a father figure, and he doesn't have that. So I'm worried for the f what the future holds for my children now without a father. Okay, so Fiona, I have a couple questions for you. So how is it with me? the only sibling that talks to your dad. Well, it's hard. My twin doesn't really talk to him, so I mean, talk about everything together, so it's hard. That must be tough, really tough not having a father there. How do you think your dad feels about the situation and everything about it? Um, probably embarrassed. Probably, I don't know. Ashamed. So when, when you see your dad, does he, does he say anything to you? or? Yeah, that he's sad that everything is the way it is. Do you think like he can do anything to try and fix that or anything? Uh, yeah, but he needs our support and no one's really giving that to him. But so you're just there to help him out? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. Well, thank you guys for coming on to the show. I really appreciate you guys coming to the interview. We're here in the office of uh, Bill's outreach worker because she couldn't make it to studio. So um, I have a couple questions for you today. Okay. So what are some steps that you took to help Bill in his uh, situation? Well, I met Bill while he was staying in the homeless shelter. The first issue we tried to tackle was his worker's compensation for his leg injury. However, despite my best attempt to set up meetings with both lawyers and the Workers' Safety Insurance Board, um, Bill did not show up for his meetings. Um, I truly believe that the money he could have received would have helped his life drastically. Um, but we have filed an application for the Ontario Disability Support Program, but we're still waiting to hear back. But a major success has been reducing his opiate use back down to pain management levels. Okay, that's that's good to hear, especially because his experience, like he was saying, with his opioids. So what are things Bill can do on his own to help his situation? Well, going forward, I do think he really needs to focus on his alcohol use and his financial planning, definitely. We need to find more funding for him, and he actually needs to start showing up for these meetings so that we can get everything that he needs, and as well as reconnecting him with his family. Okay, well, thank you for meeting me on short notice. It was nice to meet you. Anytime.